POV, the best independent point of view documentaries. I love my job. I just want to be paid the right amount that I deserve. Now I'm making less from where I first started. It, it just doesn't seem right. My husband moved out. I'm a waitress. I have no freaking money, so my life sucks. I make minimum wage, and I can't make it, and I need help. This can happen to any middle-class person in a heartbeat. The more I work, the more money I try to make, the, the more they shoot me down. I'm like, I'm hustling backwards. I would like to move my kids into the big, beautiful neighborhood with the big, gigantic house and the swimming pool in the back, but that's, a, that's more like a dream than a reality. I was brought up to believe that American dream meant that you work hard and you're going to be successful. I've worked hard my whole life, and uh, I'm still stuck. Things have changed somewhere along the line, and I feel cheated out of the American dream. Just don't get ahead. There's no American dream anymore. And this can change at any minute, right? Right, it can. I mean, so you introduce it. It's mainly the politicians first. Okay, everybody! Okay, all of you know who I am. I'm Jean Reynolds, CNA, Atlantic Islands Nursing Home, 14 years, almost 14 years. I'm the person that got in trouble for saying that God's not paying us enough. God isn't signing my paycheck, we all know that. But we are told we're doing God's work. And we're told that we're not important enough to make a decent wage. Well, God knows I'm tired of it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of it. I believe that the only way I'm going to get out of poverty is by fighting. I'm hoping that this fight would elevate my salary to a normal, livable wage. I make $11 an hour after 14 years. It's sinful. God knows it's sinful. It's gotten really tough to make ends meet. I can't work two jobs. I just can't do it anymore. I'm getting old. We have to get the money from Trenton. It's about time we started getting paid for doing God's work. Thank you. I am very ashamed of the fact that I am, at my age, a low wage earner. It's very demoralizing. Every month, it's a battle to pay the bills. I'm always afraid that the next phone call is going to be, hey, your electric is being shut off because you're behind. I'm working at my job 13 years. I work 11 at night to 7 in the morning. I bring home a little over $600 every two weeks. I pay $1,200 a month for my rent. If I don't work overtime, forget about it. Four weeks pay just covers my rent. It's the only way we make it, is by me doing extra time, extra work, and cutting corners where I can. What's the matter? 
Hmm? I'm proud of what I do. I make a difference in these people's lives. Most people here don't have families. They consider us their families. I'm handling human beings, and I'm being paid less than garbage men. And it hurts to realize that that's how little value society has placed upon me and these people that are in my care. Somebody told me something that we, I should be keeping a journal. So we got everybody a journal to write in. But each one has a different thing written. Thanks for telling us. Yeah, well, you're going to open it and you're going to see why. There's something written inside of Sir. each one of yours. It's Bridget's. What is that um, word, dream? Learn. This one, Stevens. Learn a Christmas song no. that you can sing to your Because you're a little liar. Yeah, that's no. Stevens. Right there. Merry Christmas and short. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad that I can't do what my parents did for me. I can't give the kids the things that I grew up having. She said, Danielle's your favorite, so you go whack it! Or the things that I would just want them to, even if they didn't have what I had, things that I want to give my children. I can't give. I can't afford to give them. Thank you, babe. It's always worth it to have your family with you for the holidays. Anything is worth it. If my ex-husband was a better person, more concerned about the welfare of me and his children, I think things would have been better because it would have been two of us working towards it. Right now, he's avoiding paying child support. He just doesn't feel he's obligated to help. <laughs> Why did that make you cry? I've had the hardest year trying to get ready for Christmas. My oldest daughter, Bridget, has um, thyroid cancer. They're pretty sure that she has metastasis in the brain, uh, another tumor in the brain. We'd have no insurance for Bridget, no anything. So it's like really hard, even though most people that are treated with thyroid cancer survive. They don't feel that she has, will be able to because of it being so advanced and so through her whole system. They said to go home and have a good Christmas because it's more than likely my last. But I'm going to try like hell that it's not. I get mad at her because she doesn't fight like I would. And I can't, can't fight for her. And that scares me. If you go, if you die, I'm the one that has to pick up the pieces with the kids. And that's why I keep telling you, you can't die. <laughs> It's not fair. It's not fair that you would go before me. I'm not ready to go either, but it's not fair. It's not fair. And it's been, it's been a rough year. It's been a really rough year. SRO is a single room occupancy hotel. It's probably the cheapest place you can find in San Francisco. It's just a room and I've been there two years. There's shared bathrooms. You know, it just, it just seems that I know I can do better than this. And for this little small space, I had paid $530 for rent. I could probably find something more affordable in the outskirts of the city, but that'd be jeopardizing my job because if you're late two or three times, you won't have a job. Hey, Howie. One of my fears is being homeless. I've been homeless before, and that's hard. 
I can manage the whole $10 in the bank, so I won't lose my account. And that's what I have right now is $10 in the bank. I uh, probably got about $30 in my pocket. And I don't get paid until Friday, four days away, so it's living paycheck to paycheck. I never thought I would be guarding this multi-million dollar building. And usually I'm the kind of person that was always the laborer. You going to seven floor? But now since I'm reaching to the point of my age, I guess, I'm using my mind instead of breaking my back. You have to come back the same way you come in. And then when you leave, you also have to send the elevator down for, for security purposes. Okay, you have to use the freight elevator. You can't use that elevator because that elevator has... Right to... now, I make $12 an hour. Thank you. But now it's because of the cost of living. $12 an hour in San Francisco is like six fifty an hour. In other places... That's why weekends... I'll head over to Goodwill, Thrift Town. Like this weekend, they're having sales. They're having all clothes, two dollars for my job, and they expect for you to look pretty good. I would like, you know, to be able to go get a haircut when I want it, or to to also go out and buy a new shirt or new shoes. And usually, it's not like that. Right now, I'm going through a divorce, and it sucks. When my husband left, I mean, there was no money in the bank. It was all gone. My income went to zero, literally. I go out of my county to go to the food pantry. I choose that because I don't want to run into anybody I know. They brought you the turkey and the food. Okay. This is another bag of food. Okay. All that, okay? Yeah. So you'll have a good Christmas here. I know you will. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have to do this. It's okay, that's okay. You know, it'd be a lot easier if they didn't believe in Santa, you know? <laughs> but it wouldn't be as much fun. No, it's a lot of fun. It wouldn't be near yeah. as much fun. So yeah, this really yeah. helps me. I just never thought I'd be the type of person that would have to utilize a food bank. I was one of those women that donated to people like me. <laughs> That's the truth. I really did. It's really been hard to make ends meet. And what hurts me is right now I have three dependent children that are affected by this. I could take it. But if it's starting to affect them, that, that breaks me, and that, that breaks my spirit, to be honest with you. I do it close. Oh, sucks. <laughs> it 
was a very humbling experience to get Christmas gifts for the children from the food pantry. King, this is a nice shirt. This is all for appearances, because once this holiday's over, the reality will set in. The reality's going to be that I'm going to lose my home. The car is going. There's going to be no more online service. So our lifestyle is going to change. The kids kind of are aware of what's going on. Keen said something to me, and he's like, I have money, Mom. You could borrow I have $15 in my room. I'm like, ugh. I said, no, I'm OK. It's not, you know, do you have $1,000? Maybe I'll borrow your $1,000, but your $15. So it's, um, that hurts me that they have to see this. Baked potato, french fries, or seasoned rice? Baked potato with sour cream? I would try with three wise ones. How do you want yours cooked? Medium rare because. Oh, you guys are too cute. I'm a waitress at the Millstone Inn. Put her in. I'm the oldest waitress there. I make minimum wage for waitress to 18 an hour plus tips. There are nights when I get dollar paychecks, eight dollar paychecks. There's nights I come home with thirty dollars in my pocket and I'm paying a sitter twenty-eight. I haven't had any contact with my husband in weeks. So I I know that the car payment hasn't been paid, but what I I'm telling you is I'm taking it to the dealer. What you guys want to do with it, I really don't care, but I'm not paying for it. I'm gonna take it to the Hamilton Volkswagen. Yes, and I'm putting a big red bow on it for everyone, okay? I know, it is very nice. Goodbye. That's the way um, I'm feeling now, with the exception of this, that uh, I actually agree with you. I'm screwed because it's going to be hard for me to get a car now. What does it, like, mean? I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on this. I'll, I don't want to talk to you about it. It's too much for you. You know what I mean? It's hard. It's complicated. If you have debt problems, then call for FEMA Debt Solutions, the nation's oh, largest there you go. most experienced <laughs> counseling service. For FEMA doesn't make loans. Break that down. It's a lot. And creditors nationwide. I just make one payment for FEMA, and they take care of the rest. Thank you for FEMA. I have five children living in the house with me. I would say I get about maybe three to four good hours of sleep per night. I put on this front, and my role is to be the parent of five, a full-time student, and full-time employed. Dave, when is your Christmas party at school? Your teacher didn't send anything home. I don't have money this year to buy a Christmas dinner. Egypt is going to go to her godmother's house, and Dave will probably go over to a friend's house. I guess we're borderline poverty, but it would have to be because every month you have to be concerned about 
which bill you're gonna pay, or who you're gonna send half here and half there. It's never like the bill is paid in full. I work at Leadership Training Institute, which is a non-secure detention facility for juveniles from 10 to 17 years old. I've been affiliated with this place for 21 years because I used to be a resident there. We have eight kids. The first thing you do when you come here, you always count them. Make sure that you have the right amount of kids. The kids can't use the back staircase, ever. They're not permitted to use I'm responsible for all those children at 8.25 an hour. They redid the attic. It means that I'm bringing home every two weeks $569. Okay, okay what we did is... With five kids. It's just impossible to live off of that. All those shoes, see these bins? They put names on them. I told them to number them. I know that I can make more money somewhere else. I know that I can. I know I hate to have to start over. I love my job. I love the kids, you know. I like the people that I work with. But what, what's more important is the people that I have to take care of, and that's my children. More important. What's up, boy? See that big house right there on the corner? That's a house. You see it? That was a nice house. My primary focus is to make sure that I make life easy for my kids. Because it was tough for me growing up. I grew up in Columbus, Mississippi. The sexual abuse started when I was five years old, and it was an uncle who was older. Then when my grandmother died, I had to come to New York to live with my mother, who I never had a relationship with before that. And she really just didn't want me. What really caused me to be removed is she burned skin off my face. And uh, I, I ran away, and family court placed me in non-secure detention, which is the job that I work at now. In a way, it was like a rescue. It was like a rescue. And then I still went through some things there, you know? I went through sexual abuse there as a teenager. So then I kind of felt like, you know, I, I might have felt then that, you know, this is just how life is for me. But I believe that through education, everything's gonna change. My mother wasn't educated. I don't even know if she had a high school diploma. My mother can't go back and make any changes. I can. I am seven and a half credits away from getting my associate's degree. It's hectic. It's really hectic trying to keep my 40 hour work week. I had a job to find out. He did school, the demand with the homework. Okay, but I can't get an assignment tonight and go home and do it. With five kids, it's always something that I gotta do. Hi, can I speak to you? Sure, brother. What's going on? Um, I'm doing really terrible. And I gotta find a way to pass this class in order to graduate. Mm -hmm. I have, like, limited study time. And your grades have been killing me. Um, I want to know, is it possible for me to pass? Usually what I do to motivate students the week before finals, I tell them that the purpose is to learn it. You really shouldn't get a grade based on when you learn it. When you feel ready to take the test again, you can take it again. So that gives you a lot of opportunities to bring your grade up. The fact that if you've learned At school, it, you have to do the work in order to get the grade. So that's depressing that I'm not capable of performing because I don't have the time. I could just be working full time, 
working seven days a week and saving, saving money. That talk about going to school, but in the long run, without the education, somebody's gonna come along, and you know, probably get a better position, get my position because I don't have the education. Your contract is expiring March 30th of this year. We represent 6,000 people in New Jersey. We're hoping. We'll get a better contract this time for everybody. I'm Joe Jean Carras. Reynolds. How are you, Hi, Jean? How are you? Pleasure. Good. I'm working 14 years, and I'm at, I make $11 an hour. And it's very hard to make ends meet. I wanted to know what your plans are. We were asked to get a piece of the American dream. The greatest family value is a good job with a living wage. Let's make life better for all. Let's make the American dream real for every American. Thank you, and God bless. I've done a lot for the union. I've worked on the nursing home campaign where we try to get better contracts for people. But it's done nothing for me. I'll get the raise that everybody else got, the 3% raise. I'll still only be making $11 an hour because my nursing home wasn't one of the ones that needed a new contract. I'm working a lot of overtime. I just did like two weeks straight. But that money just doesn't stretch that far. Every couple of months, there's another increase in the gas prices, you know, gas, home heating. There's another increase in your insurance price or whatever. And we're not getting that increase on our salary. And that's where it's killing us. You know, we're not keeping rise with inflation. Two little kids, their father called Bridget and told us Sunday morning, I think it was, that he gave the kids away to his sister. He couldn't take care of them anymore. Edward, what were you told? His sister lives in a motel room, a welfare motel. One room, her, her abusive boyfriend, and their child. What's the rule? I went and filed for emergency custody of the kids. They're my flesh and blood. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Financially, um, their father will not pay child support. He'll get around it some way because he's done it before. I have to find a way to work and take care of the house, and um, I'm going to have to find a way to raise two more children. I'm not the most devout Catholic, but I do get some comfort from my religion. Every Sunday I light at least one candle to St. Jude. He's the patron saint of the impossible. My life is impossible. And do we ask for help? That I'm gonna be able physically and emotionally, mentally to take care of all of these kids. There are times when I feel that God's forgotten who I am and he's testing me with the kids, but why doesn't he test me with like, multi-million dollars or a wonderful husband or an easier life. I think not that he's forgotten me, that he's neglecting me. Hi, Mr. K. How are you doing? Thank you for seeing me. Okay. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of my concerns about where we stand with uh, money-wise, how we're... I'm suffering, and I know you are too, but um, I'm concerned about what's going to happen to me in the future here. Really, what it really boils down to is, you know, what is a livable wage right. today? You know, is a livable wage X amount? Right. It might be if you have only 
two th- mouths to feed. Sure. It might not be a livable wage right. if you have I mean, eight, seven uh, of us, seven right. or eight or whatever right. number uh, right. uh, to feed. Now I've taken on extra people, and it's like you know, you know, yes. make it stretch. And I know you do it. You have to stretch what Everybody you get, stretch, and it's and just like know. it's scary when you're in my position because you don't know. Somebody younger, let's say, quote younger right. than I know. who's starting out as a CNA, mm-hmm. the best recommendation that I can give them is just to continue right. their studies and become, mm-hmm. uh, to become an LPN, RN. For me, being a single parent, I can't do it because there's just right. only one of me. I hate my life. I hate working. <laughs> I should have married a millionaire. How are you? Fine. What's new? Nothing. I didn't vacuum. Huh. <laughs> what else is new? It's rough. Money-wise, it's very, very rough. And it scares me that I, you know, that I can't do everything and picking up, you know, the, what doesn't get covered with the charity care in the hospital. The charity care I was approved for. Now they're yeah. telling me that I never filled out the papers again. I filled them out how many times? And I filled them out how many times? I, mean, I need to talk to like a head honcho there. Especially if they're going to put you on more medicine. I mean, that was 800 that one month it was for medicine. Yeah, and can't do that now. Can't work oh, that much over time. Right now, my hands are tied because the divorce is still dragging on, and I essentially have a new job because I have new owners. My hours are different, and I'm not making the money that I made. I have $200 in the bank. I'm going day by day. Mary? Yes? Can I have you a minute, please? Yeah. Did you meet uh, Michelle? Hi, Michelle. Michelle, this is Mary. Nick, this is Mary. Hi, Nick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. He's a bus person. Is he a nephew of yours as well? No, he's just a neighbor. What we're going to do with Nick is we're going to get him, we're going to teach him some work, too. Well, he's adding more staff because the new people coming in don't, they're not experienced. So what happens is, like, someone like me, I could work eight tables at a time, but someone new coming in, they can only do three or four. But because so many people quit, he's, he has to hire inexperienced people. So there'll be more people working. Like, usually Tuesday nights, we have three people. He just said there's five tonight. That's less money for me. You met Michelle? Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, Michelle. Rachel. So you girls will be training together, so you'll, you'll learn on the same level, so you swear we could do two at a time. Okay. Uh, of course, we're not going to be that busy. Hopefully, we will be, but if we are, you know, we will, uh, we will. I really don't feel like I have any skills to pursue any other job right now. I gotta pay the taxes on Friday. That's eleven hundred dollars I gotta come up with. Oh, and then I didn't make the car payment in three months, so I got them calling me, and they said, "Why haven't you made the payments?" And I said, "Because um, my husband moved out. My life sucks. I'm a waitress. I have no freaking money, and I decided to give my children Christmas instead of paying for your car." Oh no, cry, stop. Oh man, come on. You're doing a great job with the kids. I'm doing a great job, but then, you know, he called, Quinn calls last night and I can't leave work, you know? I know, Mayor, but... And then Kira, I forgot to drop off her instrument the other day at school, you know? I mean, it's just like, I, I'm forgetting things. Yeah, it's just stupid shit. 
Here we go. Here's a Visa Platinum. And here's all my deficient notices on not paying my bills. Just throw it away. I got a Platinum Visa card that I'm approved for. <laughs> I'm getting this bad boy. Now, where am I mailing this to? That's what I can't figure out. 800 sucker. <laughs> you're, you're, jerk. you're a sucker. jerk. You know that? I don't understand why they need your social. I think that's none of their business. You know what? What are they gonna do, steal my identity? Please do, okay? My debt is growing because I'm relying on credit cards to get me the things that I need in life. For instance, clothing for the children, school supplies. And so the credit card debt is, I, I was afraid to look at it and then I sat down the other day and I looked and I'm probably close to 15,000 in credit card debt. I didn't think it was that bad, but it is. Fifty-six over hundred. That's high. I know it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. To get you through the situation, we will prescribe anti-anxiety medication. Once this divorce is final, you'll be seeing me less because I'll have no health insurance. People like yourself with financial problems, you can apply to the clinic, and based on your level of income, you'll be eligible for uh, health care, uh, what they call charity care. Oh, that's really ironic because. Like whenever I've been hospitalized before, they have on your hospital papers, a portion of your bill is donated towards the charity cases. You know what I'm talking about? You know, this would be our last summer in this house, right? No. How? Because I may have to get rid of it to get something easier to live in. Mom! Mom. Think of happy thoughts. That, I, that is a happy no, thought. No, it isn't. Terrible. <laughs> Why is it it's terrible? It's a nightmare thought. Why? Just it, OK? To be on your own and try to juggle it all, it's tough especially when the children are young, they're relying on you as their sole caregiver. You're hurting me. Don't do that. Ha, ha. Don't do that, because that scares me. Honest to God, Quentin. What? What, you, what do you want me to do about the babysitting thing? I don't know. Just stop it. How can I stop it? I got to go to work. Yeah, I know. These are really crucial ages for them, and Quinn is having a hard time dealing with the fact that I'm not home that much. I think he's become resentful for that. Because I'm telling you, put the table down. You're gonna hurt me or yourself. Stop it! Wow! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! All I said was do your homework. You know, it's tough on kids when they go through a divorce. That's why I haven't been to work in two weeks. I know. I, th this is uh, to, to spend more time with him, and this is what I get. Son of a bitch. Are you all right? Yeah, he didn't get me. Why did you throw a shoe at me? Oh. What did the police say to you the other night? Hello? Yes. He's really having a tirade here. I, I don't want him endangering us. I wanted you to talk to him. I don't want you to take him, no. Because I don't believe your environment is healthy as well.
Now what do you suggest I do, Keen? God damn it. God damn it. <coughs> Get over here and talk to him. I have two children, and they live with their mom in North Carolina. I haven't seen them in nine years. Me and their mom were involved in drinking and doing drugs. One Christmas, and their mom just like picked them up and that was it. And I got myself into a recovery center. Here I am in four and a half years. I'm not saying I never will drink again because it can happen to anybody. It's just that I don't need to drink again. I send my children 200 a month, and that's really best I can do. I like to see my kids again. I mean, I had some pretty good times when I had a family. What's going on, guys? Where, where'd Jerry go? We'll be right back. We'll take a leak. We'll be right back. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you, my man. Give this to Jerry, okay? I will. He'll be right back. Jerry. Hey, thank you, my friend. All right, thank talk you. to you later, guys. I go to the gym anytime and any day. It's $50 a month. I know people say, well, you can go to the gym. That's for rich people, right? No, not really. For a recovering alcoholic, it keeps me out of trouble. You know, I don't have to be in the streets. A year ago, I was at 270 pounds. I was 48 ways. Now, I weigh 170 and I'm 34 waist. And I'm very proud of myself. Pat myself on the back. I need to take care of myself. And especially because I don't have health benefits. What do we want? Contract! And when do we work? Now! What do we want? Contract! And when do we work? Now! And we did a rally of security officers in the city of San Francisco. Security. Our contract is still in negotiations. What we're asking for, better benefits, better pay, and uh, better respect. Now, please read this and support us. If the security officers are feeling mistreated or feeling like we're really being underpaid, no, we can all stand together and, and walk out. OK, how do we do this morning? You know another thing? I don't have insurance. If I, if anything Same happens here. to me, you don't have insurance I'm going to be homeless. You don't pay the insurance either? Can't afford insurance. Our can't company, they it. doubled it. They tripled, they tripled it? Triple it. We can't afford no paycheck. insurance. How much? $50 a paycheck. Not a month, a paycheck. <laughs> Around there. A paycheck? A paycheck. Are, are the you? health benefits that we get from the, our employer, it, it's too high for me. If I paid for insurance, then I wouldn't have a place to live. I work with a group that helps the homeless and the needy called SOMCAN. 
and then we got fifth, sixth, and seventh. These four square blocks. And I work there like eight to ten hours a week. Cut the whole square. Hey, I was just worrying, man. Uh, you missed the meeting yesterday. And I'm usually talking to people on the phone and how they can get housing and how they can get medical and how they can get employment. And I, I know I've been there. And so um, I'm happy about doing this. Bye. Uh, the next speaker is Jerry uh, Longoria. Okay, good evening, commissioners. My name is Jerry. I'm an SRO resident of the Potter Hotel on 9th and Mission. I would just like to state a few things while I'm here today. Myself, I do have a full-time job, but it's not enough to pay for a decent, pla a decent place to live. As for the cost of living in this city, it is so high. The highest than any other city I'd ever lived in. Wow. This really concerns me and makes me wonder why, why it is like this. So I started to ask around and ask I thought it was great, uh -huh. but I think you really came out so strong. Yeah, if I would have more eye contact, I probably it would, it would have been like perfect, but. <laughs> it takes practice. Yeah, it takes practice. It takes practice, man. I used to try not to confront problems, but now when I'm speaking up for something that I believe in, I feel better, and I'm prouder of myself. Some can offer to pay me $400 a month, and that extra money will come in handy because uh, I've got a plan. Hi, I was wanting to start a savings account. And I'm gonna start the savings because my goal is to go see my children in North Carolina that I haven't seen in nine years. Hi. But, you know, I'm really concerned because the union has talked about, you know, having a walkout. I mean, we live paycheck to paycheck. You know, we have to make this certain amount to pay our rent, to pay our bills, to send money to our children and stuff like that. And missing one day, man, that, you know, that, that would really take a piece of the check. I'd like to see my kids again. If it's a strike, we don't know we could do that. I'm supposed to meet my math teacher, and I gotta go to BSS. I don't got time for this shit. With the raise, food stamps cut me off because I'm no longer eligible. It's like, uh, okay, you got a raise, you got a better position. You can't have food stamps. And then I got papers in the mail for Medicaid. No more Medicaid. Believe it or not, the job doesn't even provide benefits for my kids. Funny. You're gonna have to see Dr. Fisher. Bobby. Come on. Oh, well, what I got you with from kindergarten? Can you get me that kind of car? No, when you graduate from kindergarten, you can't get no car. What you want when you graduate? Dave, he has problems with his breathing system. A car. I have to get his medicine because he has to have it. He can't breathe without it. You, feel, you sound like you don't feel good. I called the doctor. 
and see if he could write me a prescription. And he said that, you know, they would have to, you know, get approval for Medicaid. And then he would call me back. And he hasn't called me back yet. Hi, I can help you. Hi, I called you. It's about Dave Lumley. Lumley, uh, which medication? Claritin and Flornades. The Flonade is $74.99? You gotta be kidding me. And the Claritin is $111.99. $111? And the total will be what? Uh, it's about $195 for both. Okay, thank you. You are. Damn. I got three extra days of my paycheck. So I'll just have to use money to get the clarity. Thank you. So hopefully we can get through this season without having to get more. The more money I make, the harder it gets. Based on what you say, hmm. you can either make my day or ruin uh, I'll make your day. I always make my tenant's day. OK. OK, let's start off first. Anything big changes in the past? What's going on now is that I did get a, a small raise mm -hmm. in my income, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, concerned that the, that my payment is going to go up. And each small raise I get, they take away my Medicaid, they took my food stamps, they took the kids off of daycare. Any, any, any increase that I get in anything, I have to pay more. It's designed to keep you down, it, it, It's not really designed to keep you down. They do want working people off of their system. It's a very unfair system. They see you progressing, so instead of helping you to progress, right. they cut everything They off. cut you off for rent. You're paying 253 a month? Let me do a quick calculation. Do you know how much has changed? OK, your payment is going up. So the rent is going up $125 which is more than the raise itself. Now it goes up more, $149. It's a shame, your payment does go up for a little bit of a raise. I'm, like, I'm hustling backwards. The harder I work, the harder it gets. And I, this is not what I expected. I expected the harder I work, you know, the more motivated I'd be because I'd be getting closer to my goal. But the harder I work, the harder it gets. It was all the security officers coming together to vote on the master contract. What I want to do is I want to go through this. Please let me go through it and then come back. I'll if it's a strike, you know, maybe it's going to prove a point. But, you know, it's going to cost, you know, our pockets to prove that point. OK, on health insurance, starting January 1st, 04, you will pay 20% of your insurance out of pocket. And as of January 1st, 07, for your coverage, you will pay nothing out of pocket. Zero. Fully paid employee only coverage. OK. For the first time ever, there are guaranteed regular pay increases. Everybody will get a raise of 25 cents. 
quarter raise, that though. That's just like uh, here. You know, I can go back for a quarter. You know, a quarter doesn't sound like a lot, but but it, it's five hundred dollars a year. Okay. Okay. With that, we're going to uh, call for a vote. So, all those in favor of the contract as proposed, signify by a show of hands. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Raising that. Great start. And then I saw that 25 cents, and then by the first of next year, you get another 25 cents. Yeah, we did it! It's like uh, a double raise. So, uh, hey, then that's going to work out. Mr. Longoria, you're going to proceed to date over 27. It's beautiful. This is one of my big goals that I've been working on in my life, to uh, see my teenage kids, JJ and Laura, that I haven't seen in nine years. When I was drinking and using, I was homeless. I used to think everybody owes me. The world owes me this. You know? Nobody owes me anything. I needed to work for it. first words are going to be out of my mouth when I do see them. So I just grab them and hug them and kiss them and just say I love you. Good and then I hope they do that to me. Once you get older, you kind of you kind of shrink. This is gotta be. Lobby security. This is Jerry. Let me help you. My last post, I was making twelve seventy-five an hour, and I'm making ten fifty an hour now. And their raises is twenty-five cents a year. And so it would take me eight years to get to where I was at. Good night, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye. -bye. Shoot, I'm making less from where I first started. So that it, it just doesn't seem right. One of my dreams is to go with my kids to Disney World. But with my rate of pay, there's just no way that it can happen. If I wanted to move out, there's no way. If I wanted to get an apartment, there's no way. I 
I'm basically stuck where I'm at, but that's the cause of my income. I, you know, I thought about it and how I could be living more comfortably by maybe if I was in a relationship. Two people coming together, uh, you can accomplish a lot. And I think that that's, that's in my plans. You just got to be patient for it. My dreams will come true if I work hard enough for them. But it's just some people's dreams get torn down. <laughs> Guess what? What could it be? You divorced. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. You know what? <laughs> I pulled over on my 71 and the garbage man was there. So I was to say, guess what? He goes, what? I said, I'm divorced. <laughs> because you're kind of hot. Can I have your phone number? I go, no, but thank you. <laughs> Can you believe it? No, my heart is like, but and then I, I get to get Quinn some help. Good. That was, yeah, so that's good. Oh, man, I'm so happy for you. You know what is really funny? Is I put these socks on today because I, Independence, Independence Day. Wow, oh, man. So tell me, how much does this cost? Did this cost? This divorce? Yeah, how much did it cost? No, serious. This is I think about 10 grand. My monthly expenses are probably $2,500 a month now. My income with the child support and alimony, that's $1,280 a month. I got the attorney bill. Right now, it stands at just under $12,000. Then the credit cards, that's $15,000. I'm independent, I'm not free. I'm not free of the economical stress of being a single parent. I've been at the food pantry on a regular basis, still. This is the introduction to Word 2000. Over the course of the next couple weeks, I'm going to need everyone to memorize because it's very important that you know all of the window elements. I'm taking this computer class because I need to acquire some skills to get my ass out there. Okay. Below the menu bar, does anybody remember what that bar is called? Food bar. Very good. And it used to be a time that you could get by on just labor, but it's not that kind of world anymore. That doesn't pay the bills. Now, there's a man in my life, and it's a positive thing, but I'm trying to clean up my mess before I totally bring him into my world. The story when I first met Mary, the mother was sitting over there by the window, and she kind of looked up at me, and I looked up at her, and our eyes met. Bless you. And I said, lady, you ain't had bad. Oh, yeah, you're spitting. Yes, he did, actually. I did say that. <laughs> does he help out a lot? I, uh, yeah, he does. He does. Do you do your homework, dear? Uh, I still probably got, like, a Sunday Like, I'm stuck for a babysitter tonight, and he's coming over uh, here to watch these kids. John that saves me right there, $50. That's may maybe insignificant to a lot of people, but it's significant to me, and it does help me. Jackson Creeper! Open a cage. You and Quinn getting along now? I told you. 
Should beat some throwing lamps at you. <laughs> no, I told you it was a matter of time. He seems calm. Matter of time, he'd come around. No, you were right. You know, I know it's only been like six months since we're together. Yeah. But things are moving kind of fast and serious, you know. If you guys like get married or something, that's like when I'm over the edge. Why? Cause why can't you just like stay? Stay what? Stay boy. F I don't know. Kira, I'm 42 years old with three kids. I the fact know. that I even met someone I get along with Marriage without arguing is is like a miracle. Marriage doesn't change anything. What's the point of getting married? It's a it's a symbol of a commitment to each other. Why would you have a symbol of commitment? I thought you were independent. I'm. I have a. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm independent. Yes, but I am learning, learning how to have a partnership with someone. This is the last of the Mohicans for you. This is the last of the Mohicans for you. Magic science trick. Just like the whole mad scientist I am. Oh, oh I'd be going what did I tell you, Carol? Oh what did God. I tell you? You got me a refrigerator? <laughs> That's to go next to your bed for the midnight snacks. Is this? I don't know. Nothing. I know exactly what this is. Good. You're. <laughs> And this goes with that, too. Come <laughs> on. This is my dick. <laughs> You're shaking, dear. You okay? This is the best Christmas present ever. It is a blessing that Julio is in my life. Oh. You know, most women get diamonds and jewels and stuff. I'm the luckiest woman alive. Man, it sure helps when there's the double income thing. But the survival part of me doesn't put all my eggs in one basket. And I certainly don't mean that to slate my relationship with him at all. But um, I know that it could all be gone in an instant, you know? Right in the middle of your door. He is helping me achieve my goals of gaining better job skills. Even though I'm in a healthy, prosperous relationship, I still want to be able to stand on my own. And somebody could stand next to me, but I gotta be on my own. This is day. the final See, stop in the <laughs> registrar's office. Good for you. Once, once you put that social security in and tell me it's really the final stop, then I'll be convinced. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good for you. you You're applying for graduation. Last time I was here, I was taking those Train two math classes. Yeah, how'd you do in them? I passed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're right. You're ready. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All we have to do is put through the paperwork. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Asshole. No more. Yeah. That's it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and don't I say what you said. Yeah, she did. How much? Millions. Millions. No. <laughs> she graduated. <laughs> I basically told myself that when I finished the associate's degree, that I would leave my job. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. So after achieving the goal, I decided that it was time to move. 
One of my previous workers told me about this new job. So I made the phone call to the lady. So I told her a little bit about me and how wonderful I was. And that, you know, I just finished up Nassau and I had got the associate's degree. And then she said, oh, so you have an associate's degree? I'm like, yeah. She said, well, I can offer you something. Maybe I can offer you something better. So when I got there, immediately, we just clicked. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Dora. How are you? Okay. I'd like you to check on your unit if you have any residents that you think would um, benefit from talking books. Joseph Lito. Okay. Frank, Mike. Uh, Maxine. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. So at first she told me that, well, I'm going to start you off as a recreational leader because most therapists have their batches already. If it ain't hot, I'm fat. Which one is it? Hot or fat? What, what is it? But by the end of our conversation, I guess she decided that she would want me in as a therapist. All right, check this out. You're going to pick your own car because I don't want nobody telling me that I gave them an unlucky card. You want to pick your card? This new job, it's 12, 10 an hour to start. Doesn't matter. Give me a kiss. I'll be bringing home over $900 every two weeks. Next ball up, 69. Six, nine. And you're reviewed every 90 days for a raise. Next ball up, G59. Bingo. Bingo! Yay! We got a bingo. You know that the facility does a 90-day review, OK, right. for all new employees. And there are certain areas that we look for, your attendance, your dependability, your independence where it comes to doing a program. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I've given you everything is marked as above average. I've given you a few excellence, and one of the excellent areas I gave you was for your attendance. I feel that you are always on time. If you're not going to be here, you make it a point to call me, and I appreciate that. I wrote that you have a wonderful way with your residents, that you're always willing to work with them and to give them the very best of you. All right, and I think that's very positive. I think you have very difficult residents to work with, okay? They have a lot of problems, and it's hard for them. And I think you do. This is, you've never done this before, and I think you're doing it very well. And, and I'm happy to have you as, why are you crying? This is a good evaluation. I could have said terrible things about you, but I'm not, because. Nobody has ever told me this before. Listen to me. You work very, very well with the residents. You know I watch you. You know that I kind of peek around the corners and I show up unannounced to catch people. And I think you're very kind and very caring, all right? I'm very happy with you. Thank you. I think you're an asset to the facility and definitely to my department. This is something. But everybody has to be praised, yeah. okay? And I think you do a good job. And I'm happy to have you with me, Thank okay? You. You also get a raise. Did I tell you that? <laughs> so I leave that out? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you have your sick time, your personal time, your vacation time, your birthday, and um, all your medical benefits. So you're, you're on board. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Not only did they decide that I was outstanding at work. I mean, I got excellent, I'm above average in everything. And I got a raise. Raise? I got a raise and a I'm whip. getting a paycheck this week, which is over $1,000. I didn't even have money last year to buy stuff for y'all. We didn't even have a Christmas dinner. <laughs> Remember when I had lights and I just had only deck, only ornaments? Just a tree. Just a ghetto, With, or, a ornament. fake ghetto tree. <laughs> Is this gonna be the best Christmas? Best ever. Get a tree. Get on your presents. You ain't even get no presents last year. See? See? You see your present? Right. That's your tree. I need to speak to you. Sure, come <clears throat> What's the matter? Nothing. Um, 
I sent you a note about my um, right. I did get wanting that to note. change mm -hmm. my full-time status to part-time status. Now, do you think this is going to be permanent for you? Or yes. Do you think mm -hmm. See, I really do hate losing you on a full-time basis. I'll, I'll be more marketable when I finish my education. I'll be a better asset. One of the reasons why I decided to go to school is that the more money I make, mm -hmm. the more I have to pay. Like with Section 8, when they see this salary, mm -hmm. I'm going to be paying 900 to to $1,000 out of the 1600 that the house costs. And now we have to pay into our health benefits. That's an issue. So every dollar that's taken out is an issue for me. It's terrible that you have to give up your job in order to survive. It, it doesn't make sense to me. And we call it hustling backwards, because that's what's happening. And at some point, you have to realize that you got to come out of the system, and you have to start hanging in there like the rest of us. Right, but what I have to do is to have the education so that I can hang in there, because associate's degree is not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. That's why I have to go back to school. OK. And then you can come out of the system. Yeah. I kind of looked at me working toward time that it's going backwards. But then someone said, anytime you're going to complete your education, don't consider it going backwards. In order to be self-sufficient, I have to go get the bachelor's degree. I knew Bridget was really seriously ill. It took almost two years before she was stabilized enough to be operated on. And then last week she celebrated her 30th birthday, which we were told she would never make. She made it to 30. <laughs> made it to this year. We had the operation, and now you should be mm -hmm. making it through next year. She's still taking a lot of medication for the pain. No, I said that. She also has hepatitis C, which is untreatable at this point. She'll never be able to work. She'll never be financially responsible or even totally responsible for her kids. Being that Bridget was sick, you know, she needed like things to go to the hospital with and things for when she came home and special foods and, you know, just the extras. So everything went to her. Because of that, everything is behind for my rent, the phone, the gas, the electric. Financially right now, it's really, really rough. This is the roughest I felt in years. Excuse me. OK, goodbye. My landlord took me to court, and uh, I'm being evicted. I had gone back and forth to social services asking these people to help. And it just seemed like nobody was hearing me. I went and I explained that I was in dire straits. I needed a place to live. And they told me, well, this isn't a real estate office. And I just looked dumbfounded. I said, you don't understand. I can't afford to live in a house anymore. If you say you need help, people in social services, tend to think, well, if you would get up off your lazy butt, you wouldn't have to worry about getting help from the government. I'm not lazy. I work every day of my life. Good afternoon, social services. May I help you? Hi, yeah. My name is Jean Mills. I have an appointment with Christine Message. Okay. Two days before I was going to be evicted, I didn't know where we were going to go. And the hardest part was not knowing where my kids were going to be the next day, where they were going to sleep. Ms. Reynolds. Yes, hi. How are you? OK. I'm Christine Messig. I'm a social worker. OK. Thank you. Why can't I get the help I need? I have custody of four of my grandchildren. I have a sick daughter, and I have my own child at home. I've come here before, and I'm told constantly I make too much money for any services. Right now, you're living in an apartment. What are you? I'm living in a very small house, okay. three bedrooms, and I have to be out by the August 15th. 
You don't have a place right now. Mm -hmm. We can't have you guys homeless, all right? right? So what we would do is refer you to our emergency assistance unit mm -hmm. for emergency placement as, you know, I know you probably don't think you'd get to this point, but you would have no other choice, right? You know what I was told to do? I was told to call interfaith churches and that the churches would put us up for a week at a time and mm -hmm. you would have to go from church to church. How am I going to keep my job? Let's just say you have no place to go, and we have to put you in a motel as much as you hate it. They're horrible. They're absolutely horrible. The people that live in them are junkies. I know these people. If I you... work too much in the community not to know what's going on. I'm not letting the kids live like that. I'll live with family. I'll live, I'll live in the street. There might be a few different programs that maybe you weren't told about. Maybe you won't be eligible for some, but because Bridget is in the household, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to take an application like it would be for her. Mm -hmm. If she is approved for a full TANF grant, that will be $552 more in the household, mm -hmm. okay, which would help a lot. But you do have to go through the application process. never asked for help in my life. To have to tell people that I couldn't support my family, and that was the hardest part. I always thought I could do everything, and I found out that I can't. Deep breath. OK. Then All right. I got a phone call saying that everything was OK we would be able to get the new house and that there would be money forthcoming from social services. That was like the best part, just knowing that somebody finally heard that I needed help. I was really lucky that Bridget was able to finally get some kind of financial aid um, aid for dependent children and something for herself. Okay, get done. She pays almost half of the rent every month is the grant from the state. Um, by her getting food stamps, um, it takes a big chunk of the money I would have had to spend for food and all. It's enabled me not to have to work so much overtime, kill myself. It's paid for us to be able to live in a, a house fit for our size family which we couldn't afford before. This is my bedroom. Of course, it has everybody else's stuff, because they all slept in here, because it was nice and cool last night. They're going to give Bridget the medical insurance, and the four kids will have the medical. It'll cover all their prescriptions and everything, which is, from Bridget, that's a big deal, you know, for, for me, for my pocketbook. No matter what we need, when we need it, Mom gets it, no matter what. She's the one reason why I'm still here. <laughs> if I wasn't sick, I'd want to be just like her. If Bridget wasn't getting some kind of assistance, I don't know where we'd be at this point. I'm stuck in an $11 an hour job. I work as many hours as I can. I don't have time to go for training between working and taking care of the kids. I mean, I can't go back to nursing school or anything like that. So it's kind of, I'm at a dead end right this minute. So it's kind of hard that I'm still stuck in a place where there's no chance for advancement. Nothing. It didn't seem like there would that it would still be this hard. I had a lot of hopes, but here I am.
we'd have no insurance for Bridget. No anything. So it's like really hard. Even though most people that are treated with thyroid cancer survive, they don't feel that she has, will be able to because of it being so advanced and so through her whole system. They said to go home and have a good Christmas because it's more than likely my last. But I'm going to try like hell that it's not. I get mad at her because she doesn't fight like I would. And it can't, it can't fight for her. And that scares me. If you go, if you die, I'm the one that has to pick up the pieces with the kids. And that's why I keep telling you, you can't die. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair that you would go before me. I'm not ready to go either. But it's not fair. It's not fair. And it's been, it's been a rough year. It's been a really rough year. SRO is a single room occupancy hotel. It's probably the cheapest place you can find in San Francisco. It's just a room and I've been there two years. Oh, there's sure bathrooms. You know, it just, it just seems that I know I can do better than this. And for this little small space, I had paid $530 for rent. I could probably find something more affordable in the outskirts of the city, but that'd be jeopardizing my job. Because if you're late two or three times, you won't have a job. Hey, Howie. One of my fears is being homeless. I've been homeless before. And that's hard. I can manage the whole $10 in the bank so I won't lose my account. And that's what I have right now is $10 in the bank. I uh, probably got about $30 in my pocket. And I don't get paid until Friday, four days away, so it's living paycheck to paycheck. I never thought I would be guarding this multi-million dollar building. And usually I'm the kind of person that was always the laborer. You going seven four? But now since I'm reaching to the point of my age, I guess, I'm using my mind instead of breaking my back. You have to come back the same way you come in. And then when you leave, you also have to send the elevator down for, for security purposes. Okay, you have to use the freight elevator. You can't use that elevator because that elevator has... Right now, I'll make $12 an hour. Thank you. But now it's because of the cost of living. $12 an hour in San Francisco is like six fifty an hour. In other places... That's why weekends... I'll head over to Goodwill, Thrift Town. Like this weekend, they're having sales. They're having all clothes, two dollars. For my job, and they expect for you to look pretty good. I would like, you know, to be able to go get a haircut when I want it, or to to also go out and buy a new shirt or new shoes. And usually, it's not like that.
right now I'm going through a divorce and it sucks. When my husband left, I mean, there was no money in the bank. It was all gone. My income went to zero, literally. I go out of my county to go to the food pantry. I choose that because I don't want to run into anybody I know. They brought you the turkey and the food. Okay. And this is another bag of food. Okay. All that, okay? Yeah. So you'll have a good Christmas here, I know you will. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have to do this. It's okay. That's okay. You know, it'd be a lot easier if they didn't believe in Santa, you know? <laughs> it would. But it wouldn't be as much fun. No, it's a lot of fun. It wouldn't be near yeah. as much fun. So yeah, this really know. helps me. I just never thought I'd be the type of person that would have to utilize a food bank. I was one of those women that donated to people like me. <laughs> That's the truth. I really did. It's really been hard to make ends meet. And what hurts me is right now I have three dependent children that are affected by this. I could take it, but if it's starting to affect them, that, that breaks me and that, that breaks my spirit, to be honest with you. It's a very humbling experience to get rescued. And then I still went through some things there, you know? I went through sexual abuse there as a teenager. So then I kind of felt like, you know, I, I might have felt then that, you know, this is just how life is for me. But I believe that through education, everything's gonna change. My mother wasn't educated. I don't even know if she had a high school diploma. My mother can't go back and make any changes. I can. I am seven and a half credits away from getting my associate's degree. It's hectic. It's really hectic trying to keep my 40 hour work week. I had to try to find out. He did school, the demand with the homework. Okay, but my problem is. I can't get an assignment tonight and go home and do it. With five kids, this is always something that I gotta do. Quiet, tight. Can I speak to you? Sure, brother. What's going on? Um, I'm doing really terrible. And I gotta find a way to pass this class in order to graduate. Mm -hmm. I have, like, limited study time. And your grades have been killing me. Um, I want to know, is it possible for me to pass? Usually what I do to motivate students the week before finals, I tell them that the purpose is to learn it. You really shouldn't get a grade based on when you learn it. When you feel ready to take the test again, you can take it again. So that gives you a lot of opportunities to bring your grade up. The fact that if you've learned At school, it, you have to do the work in order to get the grade. So that's depressing that I'm not capable of performing because I don't have the time. I can just be working full time, working seven days a week, and save, saving money. Then talk about going to school. But in the long run, without the education, somebody's going to come along and, you know, probably get a better position, get my position because I don't have the education.
contract is expiring March 30th of this year. We represent 6,000 people in New Jersey. We're hoping we'll get a better contract this time for everybody. I'm Joe Carrillo. How are you, Hi. How are you? Pleasure. Good. I'm working 14 years, and I'm at, I make $11 an hour. And it's very hard to make ends meet. I wanted to know what your plans are. We're asked to get a piece of the American dream. The greatest family value is a good job with a living wage. Let's make life better for all. Let's make the American dream real for every American. Thank you and God bless. I've done a lot for the union. I've worked on the nursing home campaign where we try to get better contracts for people. But it's done nothing for me. I'll get the raise that everybody else got, the 3% raise. I'll still only be making $11 an hour because my nursing home wasn't one of the ones that needed a new contract. I'm working a lot of overtime. I just did like two weeks straight. But that money just doesn't stretch that far every couple of months. There's another increase in the gas prices, you know, gas, home heating. There's another increase in your insurance price or whatever, and we're not getting that increase on our salary. And that's where it's killing us. You know, we're not keeping rise with inflation. kids. Their father called Bridget and told us Sunday morning, I think it was, that he gave the kids away to his sister. He couldn't take care of them anymore. Edward, what were you told? His sister lives in a motel room, a welfare motel. One room, her, her abusive boyfriend, and their child. What's the rule? I went and filed for emergency custody of the kids. They're my flesh and blood. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Financially, um, their father will not pay child support. He'll get around it some way because he's done it before. I have to find a way to work and take care of the house, and um, I'm going to have to find a way to raise two more children. I'm not the most devout Catholic, but I do get some comfort from my religion. Every Sunday I light at least one candle to St. Jude. He's the patron saint of the impossible. My life is impossible. And do we ask for help? That I'm gonna be able physically and emotionally, mentally to take care of all of these kids. There are times when I feel that God's forgotten who I am and he's testing me with the kids, but why doesn't he test me with like, multi-million dollars or a wonderful husband or an easier life. I think not that he's forgotten me, that he's neglecting me. Hi, Mr. K. How are you doing? Thank you for seeing me. Okay. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of my concerns about where we stand with uh, money-wise, how we're... I'm suffering, and I know you are too, but um, I'm concerned about what's going to happen to me in the future, here. Really, what it really boils down to is, you know, what is a livable wage right. today? You know, is a livable wage X amount? Right. It might be if you have only two mouths to feed. Sure. It might not be a livable wage right. if you have... I mean, eight, seven uh, of us. Seven right. or eight or whatever right. number uh, right. uh, to feed. Now I've taken on extra people, and it's like, you know, 
you know, yes. make it stretch. And I know you do it. You have to stretch what Everybody you get. Has to stretch and it's just like get. it's scary when you're in my position because you don't know. Somebody younger, let's not quote younger right. than I know. who's starting out as a CNA, mm -hmm. the best recommendation that I can give them is just to continue right. their studies and mm -hmm. become uh, to become an LPN, RN. For me, being a single parent, I can't do it because there's just right. only one. Christmas gifts for the children from the food pantry. King, this is a nice shirt. This is all for appearances because once this holiday's over, the reality will set in. The reality's gonna be that I'm going to lose my home. The car is going. There's gonna be no more online service. So our lifestyle is going to change. The kids kind of are aware of what's going on. Keen said something to me, and he's like, I have money, Mom. You could borrow. I have $15 in my room. I'm like, ugh. I said, no, I'm OK. It's not, you know, do you have $1,000? Maybe I'll borrow your $1,000, but your $15. So it's, um, that hurts me that they have to see this. Baked potato, french fries, or seasoned rice? Baked potato with sour cream? I would try with three wise ones. How do you want yours cooked? Medium rare because. Oh, you guys are too cute. I'm a waitress at the Millstone Inn. Put her in. I'm the oldest waitress there. I make minimum wage for waitress to 18 an hour plus tips. There are nights when I get dollar paychecks, eight dollar paychecks. There's nights I come home with thirty dollars in my pocket and I'm paying a sitter twenty-eight. I haven't had any contact with my husband in weeks. So I I know that the car payment hasn't been paid. But what I'm telling you is I'm taking it to the dealer. What you guys want to do with it, I really don't care, but I'm not paying for it. I'm gonna take it to the Hamilton Volkswagen. Yes, and I'm putting a big red bow on it for everyone, okay? I know it is very nice. Goodbye. That's the way um, I'm feeling now, with the exception of this, that uh, I actually agree with you. I'm screwed because it's going to be hard for me to get a car now. What does it like mean? I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on this. I'll, I don't want to talk to you about it. It's too much for you. You know what I mean? It's hard. It's complicated. If you have debt problems, then call for FEMA Debt Solutions, the nation's largest there you go. Most expensive <laughs> counseling service. For FEMA doesn't make loans. Break that down. Instead, <laughs> That's a lot. And creditors nationwide. I just make one payment for FEMA, and they take care of the rest. Thank you for FEMA. I have five children living in the house with me. I would say I get about maybe three to four good hours of sleep per night. I put on this front and my role is to be the parent of five, a full-time student, and full-time employed. Dave, when is your Christmas party at school? Your teacher didn't send anything home. I don't have money this year to buy a Christmas dinner. Egypt is gonna go to her godmother's house, and Dave will probably go over to a friend's house. Hey, go on, go on. 
I guess we're borderline poverty. But it would have to be because every month you have to be concerned about which bill you're going to pay or who you're going to send half here and half there. It's never like the bill is paid in full. I work at Leadership Training Institute, which is a non-secure detention facility for juveniles from 10 to 17 years old. I've been affiliated with this place for 21 years because I used to be a resident there. We have eight kids. The first thing you do when you come here, you always count them. Make sure that you have the right amount of kids. The kids can't use the back staircase, ever. They're not permitted to use I'm responsible for all those children at 8.25 an hour. They redid the attic. It means that I'm bringing home every two weeks $569. Okay. Okay, what we did is... With five kids. It's just impossible to live off of that. All those shoes, see these bins? They put names on them. I told them to number them. I know that I can make more money somewhere else. I know that I can. I know I hate to have to start over. I love my job. I love the kids, you know. I like the people that I work with. But what, what's more important is the people that I have to take care of, and that's my children. It's more important. What's up, boy? That big house right there on the corner? That's a house. You see it? That was a nice house. My primary focus is to make sure that I make life easy for my kids. Because it was tough for me growing up. I grew up in Columbus, Mississippi. The sexual abuse started when I was five years old, and it was an uncle who was older. Then when my grandmother died, I had to come to New York to live with my mother, who I never had a relationship with before that. And she really just didn't want me. What really caused me to be removed is she burned skin off my face. And uh, I, I ran away, and family court placed me in non-secure detention, which is the job that I work at now. In a way, it was like a rescue. It was like a rescue. my life. I hate working. <laughs> I should have married a millionaire. How are you? Fine. What's new? Nothing. I didn't vacuum. Huh. <laughs> what else is new? It's rough. Money-wise, it's very, very rough. And it scares me that I, you know, that I can't do everything and picking up you know, the, what doesn't get covered with the charity care in the hospital. The charity care I was approved for, now they're yeah. telling me that I never filled out the papers again. I filled them out how many times? And I filled them out how many times? I, mean, I need to talk to, like, a head honcho there. Especially if they're going to put you on more medicine. I mean, that was 800 that one month it was for the medicine. Yeah, and can't do that now. Can't work oh, that much over time. Right now, my hands are tied because the divorce is still dragging on, and I essentially have a new job because I have new owners. My hours are different, and I'm not making the money that I made. I have $200 in the bank. I'm going day by day. 
Mary? Yes? Can I have you a minute, please? Yeah. Did you meet uh, Michelle? Hi, Michelle. Michelle, this is Mary. Nick, this is Mary. Hi, Nick. Nice to Mary. meet you. Nice to meet you. He's a uh, bus he, person. Is he a nephew of yours as no, well? No, he's just okay. a neighbor. What we're going to do with Nick is we're going to get him. We're going to teach him some work, too. Well, he's adding more staff because the new people coming in don't not they're not experienced. So what happens is like someone like me, I could work eight tables at a time, but someone new coming in, they can only do three or four. But because so many people quit, he's he has to hire inexperienced people. So there'll be more people working. Like usually Tuesday nights we have three people. He just said there's five tonight. That's less money for me. You met Michelle? Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, Michelle. Rachel. So you girls will be training together so you'll you'll learn on the same level, so you this way we could do two at a time. Okay. Um, of course, we're not going to be that busy. Hopefully, we will be, but if we are, you know, we will, uh, we will. I really don't feel like I have any skills to pursue any other job right now. I gotta pay the taxes on Friday. That's eleven $1 hundred dollars I gotta come up with. Oh, and then I didn't make the car payment in three months, so I got them calling me. And they said, why didn't you make the payments? And I said, because um, my husband moved out. My life sucks. I'm a waitress. I have no freaking money. And I decided to give my children Christmas instead of paying for your car. Oh, don't cry. Stop. Oh, man, come on. You're doing a great job with the kids. I'm doing a great job, but then, you know, he called, Quinn calls last night and I can't leave work, you know? I know, Mayor, but... And then Kira, I forgot to drop off her instrument the other day at school, you know? I mean, it's just like, I, I'm forgetting things. Yeah, it's just stupid shit. Here we go. Here's a Visa Platinum. And here's all my deficient notices on not paying my bills. Just throw it away. I got a platinum visa card that I'm approved for. <laughs> I'm getting this bad boy. Now, where am I mailing this to? That's what I can't figure out. 1800 sucker. <laughs> you're, a you're a jerk. Sucker. You know that? I don't understand why they need your social. I think that's none of their business. Uh, you know what? What are they going to do? Steal my identity? Please do. Okay? My debt is growing because I'm relying on credit cards to get me the things that I need in life. For instance, clothing for the children, school supplies. And so the credit card debt is, I, I was afraid to look at it and then I sat down the other day and I looked and I'm probably close to 15,000 in credit card debt. I didn't think it was that bad, but it is. Fifty-six over a hundred. That's high. I know. Come in. Yeah. Yeah. To get you through the situation, we will prescribe anti-anxiety medication. Once this divorce is final, you'll be seeing me less because I'll have no health insurance. People like yourself with financial problems, you can apply to the clinic, and based on your level of income, you'll be eligible for uh, health care, uh, what they call charity care. Oh, that's really ironic because. Like, whenever I've been hospitalized before, they have on your hospital papers, a portion of your bill is donated towards the charity cases. You know what I'm talking about? You know, this would be our last summer in this house, right? No. How? 
Because I may have to get rid of it to get something easier to live in. Mom! Mom. Think of happy thoughts. That, I, that is a happy no, thought. No, it isn't. It's <laughs> terrible. Why is it it's terrible? It's a nightmare thought. Why? Just it, okay? To be on your own and try to juggle it all, it's tough. Especially when the children are young, they're relying on you as their sole caregiver. You're hurting me. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, because that scares me. Honest to God, Quentin. What? What, you, what do you want? POV, the best independent point of view documentaries. I love my job. I just want to be paid the right amount that I deserve. I'm making less from where I first started. It, it just doesn't seem right. My husband moved out. I'm a waitress. I have no freaking money, so my life sucks. I make minimum wage, and I can't make it, and I need help. This can happen to any middle-class person in a heartbeat. The more I work, the more money I try to make, the, the more they shoot me down. I'm like, I'm hustling backwards. I would like to move my kids into the big, beautiful neighborhood with the big, gigantic house and the swimming pool in the back, but that's, a, that's more like a dream than a reality. I was brought up to believe that the American dream meant that you work hard and you're going to be successful. I've worked hard my whole life, and uh, I'm still stuck. Things have changed somewhere along the line, and I feel cheated out of the American dream. Just don't get ahead. There's no American dream anymore. Jean Reynolds, CNA, Atlantic Council, nursing home, 14 years, almost 14 years. I'm the person that got in trouble for saying that God's not paying us enough. God isn't signing my paycheck, we all know that. But we are told we're doing God's work. And we're told that we're not important enough to make a decent wage. Well, God knows I'm tired of it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of it. I believe that the only way I'm gonna get out of poverty is by fighting. I'm hoping that this fight would elevate my salary to a normal, livable wage. I make $11 an hour after 14 years. It's sinful. God knows it's sinful. It's gotten really tough to make ends meet. I can't work two jobs. I just can't do it anymore. I'm getting old. We have to get the money from Trenton. It's about time we started getting paid for doing God's work. Thank you.
I am very ashamed of the fact that I am, at my age, a low wage earner. It's very demoralizing. Every month, it's a battle to pay the bills. I'm always afraid that the next phone call is going to be, hey, your electric is being shut off because you're behind. I'm working at my job 13 years. I work 11 at night to 7 in the morning. I bring home a little over $600 every two weeks. I pay $1,200 a month for my rent. If I don't work overtime, forget about it. Four weeks' pay just covers my rent. It's the only way we make it, is by me doing extra time, extra work, and cutting corners where I can. What's the matter? Mm -hmm. I'm proud of what I do. I make a difference in these people's lives. Most people here don't have families. They consider us their families. I'm handling human beings, and I'm being paid less than garbage men. And it hurts to realize that that's how little value society has placed upon me and these people that are in my care. Somebody told me something, that we, I should be keeping a journal. So we got everybody a journal to write in, but each one has a different thing written. Thanks for telling us. Yeah, well, you're going to open it, and you're going to see why. There's something written inside okay. of each one of yours. This Bridget's. What is that okay. word, dream? Learn. Yeah, this one, Stevens. Learn a Christmas song no. that you can sing to your Because you're a little higher. Yeah, that's Stevens. Right there. Merry Christmas and short. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. That I can't do what my parents did for me. I can't give the kids the things that I grew up having. <laughs> or the things that I would just want them to, even if they didn't have what I had, things that I want to give my children. I can't give. I can't afford to give them. It's always worth it to have your family with you for the holidays. Anything is worth it. If my ex-husband was a better person, more concerned about the welfare of me and his children, I think things would have been better because it would have been two of us working towards it. Right now, he's avoiding paying child support. He just doesn't feel he's obligated to help. Why did that make you cry? I've had the hardest year trying to get ready for Christmas. My oldest daughter, Bridget, has um, thyroid cancer. They're pretty sure that she has metastasis in the brain, uh, another tumor in the brain. 